You are listening to Radio Yastrava. Onze talent, onze mensen. WhatsApp ons bij 064 536 9095. Talk to us, die dang ruk hier. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Let's go to the top. Good morning, everyone. This is Wolfred Salia from coming to you live from Radio Yesterday in our program, a broadcast called Our Faith is Our Victory. 
The Bible says in the book of Psalms, in Psalms, the scripture is clear that um, God's name, the Hebrew meaning of God's name, is in one instance, there's seven different meanings of God's name in the original Hebrew language. He is Jehovah Rapha, he is the Lord our healer, he is Jehovah Tzitkanu, he is our, our, our righteousness, he is Jehovah Makedesh, he is our, Jehovah our sanctifier, he is Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider, he is El Elyon, he is the Most High God. And so we have different meanings and different names for the meaning of God. And in Psalms, David calls him Jehovah the Good. Jehovah who is good, the God who is good, the God who shows goodness towards us. So God is a good God. God's goodness and his mercies, David says in in Psalms 23, will remain forever and ever and ever. He will never change. He cannot change. He says in the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, he's yesterday, today and forever the same. And in the, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth and he saw it was good. And God created the animal kingdom and he saw that it was good. And God created the vegetation kingdom and God saw that it was good. And God created the sea and everything under the sea and he saw that it was good. And he created man and God saw that it was good. But notice God created everything good and perfect first and then he created man. God created man in a way where he provided everything for mankind. Everything that you and I would ever need has already been provided. When God said light be, okay, that's what it means in the original Hebrew I know how King King James Bible says, and God said, "Let us." And God said, "Let us make man in our image." And but before that, He said, "Let us create the heavens and the earth." But in the original Hebrew, He commanded the earth and matter to be. He said, "Light be," and light was. He said, "Man be," and man was. He literally spoke everything that exists into existence. So God created everything and he made everything ready and perfect and then he created man. He first provided for you and I and then he created us and he created us perfect. He created us in his image and in his likeness. Notice we are, man is a spirit He possesses a soul and he lives in a physical body. You and I are created in the image and likeness of God. God is not a man. God is spirit. And when he created you and I, he created us spirit beings. The Bible says that he created man another speaking spirit. I know how King James Bible says he created man a living soul, but the, the New Living Translation says he created man another speaking spirit. Just like he is a speaking spirit, he created you and I in his image and in his likeness, and we are created as another speaking spirit made in the image and likeness of God. But notice what happened when Adam committed high treason in the Garden of Eden. When Adam rebelled against God, man lost his glory. Man lost his glory and man was separated from God. God came into the garden of Eden and Adam and Eve was hiding from God and they covered themselves up with fig leaves, the Bible says. Why did they cover themselves up? Because the glory coat that they possessed was removed. They removed, by rebelling against God, they removed the glory coat and man separated from God and man lost his glory and as a result, sin came into the world because of Adam and Eve's trespasses. But God created mankind, man, 
the, the existence of man when man was originally created was in the image and in the likeness of God. And just as Adam and Eve sinned in the beginning, just as they committed sin, and because of their sins, because of their tras- trespasses, you and I were born into sin. You see, all we needed to do to be sinners was to be born. You and I didn't do anything wrong when we came into this earth, but we came into this life, into existence, into the earth as sinners because of Adam and Eve's trespass. You and I did nothing to sin or to be called sinners. We did no sin. We committed no sin in order to inherit the identity of as sinners, of, of sinners. All we needed to do was to be born because our inheritance was to be born as sinners because of Adam and Eve's trespasses. Well, likewise, the book of Romans 5 verse 17 says, just as by one man's trespass, many were made sinners by Adam's trespass, likewise, by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. So, just like we didn't do anything to be sinners, we didn't do anything to be righteous. Jesus Christ came and he paid the price and he took upon him the sins of all of mankind, all of mankind, all of mankind that existed before he came and all of mankind that existed when he walked the earth and all of mankind that would ever come. He even took their sins upon him. Jesus paid the price for our past sins, for our present sins, and for all of our future sins. Somebody say, no, that can't be. How could Jesus pay the price for our future sins? Well, before you were born, your sins, the price for your sins was paid already. So Jesus Christ paid more than 2,000 years ago for your future sins and for all of mankind's past sins, for all of mankind's future sins and for the present sins of those who walked the earth when he was walking the earth at the time when he came to the earth as a man. So all we needed to do to be righteous, to have right standing with God was to be born again, was to be born, was to be born of the Spirit. You see, all we needed to do to be sinners was to be born, was to come into the earth, was to come out of your mother's womb and you were a sinner because of Adam's transgressions, because of Adam's disobedience. Likewise, because of Jesus' obedience, we were reborn as the righteousness of God. All you had to do was to say yes to Jesus. All you had to do was to say, yes, I receive the gift of righteousness. Yes, I receive what you've done for me on the cross. Can you see why it's so crucial to understand what Jesus did for us? Can you see why we are called Christians? Jesus, our Savior, came and he paid the price and he made us right with God. He gave us right standing with God. All we need to do to have right standing with God, to have rights with God, to be right with God, that's what right standing means, was to be born again was to say yes to Jesus. You don't have to wear a special coat. You don't have to wear a suit on a Sunday. You don't have to keep the the demands of the law. All you need to do is to say, yes, Jesus, I believe what you did for me. I believe that you're a savior. I believe that you took my sins upon you. I believe that you're the Messiah. I believe that you're God's only begotten son. And you came for this very reason to save those who are lost. He came to seek and to save those who are lost, the scripture says. So our part is to believe. Our part is to believe what Jesus did. Once again, that's why we're called Christians. We believe Jesus. We believe what Jesus says. We believe what Jesus did. We have faith 
in Jesus. We have faith in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. We have faith in how Jesus went to the cross, died, bled, suffered, took the sins of all of mankind upon him, and then rose on the third day and was ex- and, 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 and went up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father until he is made his enemies his footstool. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father and he has done everything that is required for you and I to be saved, for you and I to live a victorious life, for you and I to be whole, for you and I to be healed, for you and I to prosper, for you and I to enjoy abundant life. He did it all. It's all a one-sided affair. It's Jesus plus nothing. It's not Jesus plus your performance. It's not Jesus plus you going on a 40-day fast. It's not Jesus plus you studying your Bible for for, 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 for 60 weeks con, 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 consecutively. It's not Jesus plus everything you did right. It's Jesus plus nothing. Jesus was enough. What Jesus did on the cross was enough and nothing else is required except you believing on Jesus. The key is to believe that Jesus did everything for you and I to be saved, for you and I to be whole, for you and I to be victorious. Jesus is our victory. Our victory is in Jesus. Our faith stands in Jesus. Our faith and our dependence and our reliance stands in what and what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. He's already accomplished it. He's already done it. He's already reconciled us with the Father. He's done it already. You and I just need to believe. You and I, our part, our part, our part is just to believe. Oh, it sounds almost too good to be true. It sounds so one-sided. It sounds so over the top. That's exactly what it is. It's the good news that Paul spoke about. It's the over the top, almost too good to be true news about how Jesus came and declared us righteous without us having done anything to deserve it. He came and he did it all. He did it all. He was enough. Jesus is enough. What Jesus did is enough. I don't care how deep you've sunk into sin. I don't care how wayward you are. I don't care what atrocious deeds you committed. I don't care what kind of ugly things you did. The love of Jesus is all that is required to draw you in for you to understand how much God loves you, that's the only requirement and you're accepting that he loves you. Friend, God is a good God and he loves you. He loves you. I like the scripture where he says, if you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more would our Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? If you are evil, if you natural Fathers, if you natural parents care about your children so much and that you in your heart just 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 automatically just want to be good to them, just want to see them excel, just want to see them do well, want to see them prosper, if you wish nothing bad upon them, if you are evil, if you natural man. If you natural man wish that upon your children, how much more would your father in heaven give good gifts unto those who ask him? God loves you, my friend. It, 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 it paints a picture of the love of God. It paints a picture and it draws a comparison between your love as a natural person, as a natural father, as a natural parent for your kids, for your children, How much more wouldn't God, our good daddy, our Abba Father, 
of Daddy God. That's what the word Abba Father means. The term Abba Father means. How much more would he care and love and give good gifts to you when you ask him? God loves you, my friend. David once again wrote, I, uh, in fact, it's, 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 it's John that wrote, that wrote, that said, I believe and I know the love that God has for me. You've got to get a revelation of the love of God for you. If there's one thing that Christians got to understand is how, it is how much God loves them. God loves you, my friend. God loves you more than any other being can love you. That's why John wrote and he said, I have known and I believe the love that God has for me. God loves you, my friend. God cares about you. He loves you so much that he gave you the best gift that heaven had. He gave you his only begotten son. He sent him to the earth so that you and I might inherit eternal life. God gave the best gift that heaven had and he demonstrated his love through giving. There's a saying that says you can love without giving but you cannot give without loving. You see, giving is the chief greatest expression of love. When it's someone's birthday, we give them a gift. When it's, when it's a special day in somebody's life, we buy them something. We give a trusted friend our time when, when they go through a difficult time. We spend time with someone and give them our, our attention when they're going through a rough time. We give to somebody um, 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 when they're in need. We give groceries. We give of our, of, our, of our finances because we love, because we have compassion, because we have sympathy. It's expressing our love. Likewise, for God so loved the world, watch this, that he gave. He expressed his love through giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave, and he didn't just give any old dirty thing. He gave the best that heaven had. He gave his one and only begotten son so that you and I should not perish but have eternal life. God loves you, my friend. God loves you. Every time you go to, through a difficult circumstance, you've got to remind yourself that God loves you. Every time the money doesn't show up and it looks like you're, never, you're not going to make it financially, you've got to remind yourself that God loves me. And because God loves me, he's going to make a way for, for me. Every time sicknesses attacks your body, you've got to say to yourself, God loves me. This thing is going to be healed. God's going to come through for me because God loves me. See, You see, it's based on the love of God. My confidence is based on God's love for me. God loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know. How do I know it? For the Bible tells me so. See, it's solely based on what God says in his word. I don't have to feel it. I don't have to get good goosebumps. I don't have to see stars sparkling and, and shooting. No, 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 no. The Bible tells me so. We learned that in Sunday school. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves you. And he says it in his word. And the only evidence that you need that God loves you is that he says in John 3, 16, For I so loved you. I so loved the world that I gave. I gave the best gift that I had. And the gift that he gave was Jesus. Jesus. Our faith is in Jesus. Our faith stands in Jesus. Our faith stands in what Jesus has already accomplished for us on the cross. Because when he hung on the cross, he exclaimed, it is finished. That word or that phrase, it is finished, in the original Greek is, 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 is just one single word, Tetelestai. When Jesus hung on the cross, he exclaimed, Tetelestai. And everyone around the cross understood what he was saying. He was saying it is finished. He was saying the price has already been paid. He was saying the battle has already been won. He was saying the sentence has already been served. Jesus did it all. Jesus conquered once and for all 
every fight that comes your way, every attack one that, that the devil wants to put on you, every trap that the devil sets for you, every sickness that wants to come onto your body, every form of lack, every form of insufficiency, every form of poverty, every form of trouble that wants to attack your marriage, that wants to attack your family life, Jesus already obtained the victory for you. And John writes, and he says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Our faith. Our faith in what Jesus has already accomplished. This is the victory that overcomes the world system. That overcomes Satan's operation. This is the victory that overcomes Satan's attacks and Satan's traps and Satan's operations against me and Satan's plans to hamper me and Satan's plans to rob me and steal from me and destroy me and and, and take me out. This is the victory, our faith. Our faith in what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Our faith in how Jesus conquered him, how Jesus whooped him, how Jesus stripped him of all power and how he handed that power over to you and I and how he said now you rule and you reign and you have authority and you have Satan underneath your feet as you sit with me at the right hand of the Father I am giving you authority and until we have made the enemy our footstool Jesus is sitting down He's sitting down. He's not anxious. He's not making sacrifices. He's not fighting on him anymore. The devil has been whooped. The devil has been conquered. And the victory is yours. Because you've been given the authority. You've been given power of attorney to use his name. And that name has been exalted above every other name. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You have the authority and that our confidence, our confidence in in, in, in being victorious, our confidence in in living um, um, this life of of, of victory and this life of having authority over the devil and authority over circumstances that comes our way is based on our faith in what Jesus has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Jesus already accomplished the victory for us. Jesus already obtained the victory for us. Our part is to maintain what Jesus obtained. He obtained the victory. And in him, once you said yes to Jesus, once you've, once you've laid down your life and you surrendered your life to him, and you're now in him and he's in you, Once you've done that, you can walk in victory. You can live in victory. You can walk confidently and know that the devil has been whooped and that you have the authority and you have power over the devil and nothing shall by no means, by any means hurt you because your faith is in Jesus and your Confidence is in Jesus and your victory is in Jesus. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, made us champions with him. Glory be to God. This is Wilfred Salia. Have a fantastic day and remember, keep walking by faith. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. 